let's try this again. <laughs> Trying with the flamenco clap. Second attempt because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of helicopters and not a, <laughs> not a lot. Anyways, today I want to talk about Chromabooks and Shitaro Kago. And I've seen it pronounced a myriad of ways. I've seen it also reversed where it's Kago Shintaro. If you have strong feelings about this, leave it in the comments and I'll probably ignore it like I do all case sniffing comments because I spent too long amongst guitarists to ever really care what case sniffers actually say because they can't play worth a crap and this applies whatever field that you're in. But back to normal, <laughs> here we go. Um, I've been a big fan of Shintaro Kago for quite a while. If you've ever seen his work, you can probably figure out why. He calls it fashionable paranoia. Uh, it's very hard to get a hold of. Usually, I think you can get Dementia 21 and Super Dementia Love Gun. Those are pretty easy to get. Uh, maybe Fanagraphics released one. I think they did the Dementia 21 series. His other stuff, such as Princess of the Neverending Castle, Twelve Sisters of the Neverending Castle, Day of the Flying Head, <clears throat> Industrial Revolution and World War, those you're going to have to order from an Italian press, which is called Hollow Press. And of course, I'll put links down in the description below where you can get those if you don't already know. I'm guessing if you clicked on this, you already knew what was going on. So I don't want to like spend too long wasting your time. Just for the uninitiated, if you don't know, Shintaro Kago is considered an Iroguro artist. Um, if you're into Iroguro, which stands for basically it's a shortened version of erotic grotesque. I cannot recommend highly enough Miriam Silverberg's book, Erotic Grotesque Nonsense, The Mass Culture of Japanese Modern Times. Wonderful book. And a lot of times the nonsense, which I believe it's Iroguro Nonsensu in Japanese, but phew, who knows, I can't pronounce English worth the crap. So your mileage may vary. Anyways, Check out her book because she traces how nonsense was such an integral part of the erotic grotesque movement back in the 1920s and moving on. And she talks about Charlie Chaplin's first visit while there was an anarchist uh, uh, plot to kill him. Fascinating stuff. But I believe nonsense is left out of this equation far too often. So I'll see people get very serious from like the weird fiction community and be like Junji Ito's guy oh, is just it's ridiculous and nonsensical and it's like there's such a close connection between nonsense and abject horror that you kind of want to thump yourself in the head for those people that don't get it it's very confusing to me anyways Chroma from New Zealand uh, announced that they were going to distribute Shintaro Kago's uh, art book and I was really excited to get a hold of this. A little bit pricey, but pretty much all I spend my money on is art supplies, music equipment, and books. So, yeah, it's pretty easy. But it was still a good 50 to 70 bucks, I think. And I first heard this on November 3rd, 2020. Alan from Chroma contacted me on December 8th because he was forwarding along. He had forgotten to send the tracking number which it's COVID, you know, who cares? I told him, yeah, that'd be cool. And about February 13th, uh, I contacted him and said, yeah, we still haven't gotten it. And the tracking number showed it had been shipped to San Francisco and just laid to the side. And then followed just a comedy of errors. Now, let me say this. Brooklyn, we kind of have a competition going on as to which neighborhood has the worst post office. And Crown Heights is in the running. I mean, we're pretty famous for the manager of the post office kicking a blind guy out of the post office because he couldn't produce papers proving that his dog was a service dog. So that tells you about the level of just nonsense that is prevalent but i do believe coney island has beat us out but they weren't even involved in this because this package it was labeled as sitting in the los angeles or san francisco sorting center it kept on varying back and forth and you could look at it and see it's not moving and we even sent letters 
I still have the PDF scan of my first one from February 16th. Um, Alan tried everything he could from his side. The New Zealand postal system wouldn't help him at all. And then he graciously just sent me another copy of, like I said, this expensive book, expensive to ship, but this time he sent a DHL. And April 8th, bam, it shows up. So Alan from Chroma, ah, all the love in the world. Amazing, amazing service. I have never seen anything like that. It was just incredible and really touching. So to me, this book will always be wrapped up with starting to talk to Alan from Chroma and just realizing what a great guy he was and how great their organization was. You should definitely check out their website. They have a lot of great stuff there. They do some very good uh, events in New Zealand. Someday I hope to get down there and actually see it. But I believe I'm taking up too much of your time. So what we'll do is we'll cut over, and I did it as I did with uh, the Temple of Silence book earlier, if you saw that review, laid it out so you can see the full thing. Warning up front, as I said, this is erotic, grotesque nonsense. You know by the very title what you're getting into. So, yeah. That, uh, well, that's, that's on you if you continue past this point. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for putting up with this. Another thing I'll tell you, grab the Flying Lotus album, You're Dead. Grab the vinyl copy because... Shintaro did the uh, a ton of artwork for that. I believe Warp may still have copies of that edition. If they don't, check like Amoeba, the usual suspects. Anyway, you guys, we're going to kick to it. Love you so much. Love again. All the love in the world to Alan from Chroma because so like above and beyond. Just amazing, amazing service. So highly recommend them. Highly recommend this book. Highly recommend you go to Hollow Press and check out their offerings by Shintaro. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, so here is the outside of Shintaro Kago's art book. And the back. Let's get the little... I don't know if they call these an OB on books. Showing my ignorance as usual, but let me remove the dust jacket. Just so you can see how beautiful the actual inside cover is. If you're a fan of Shintaro, you already know just how wonderful it is. But I love the absolutely off-kilter surreal aspect to his work, which this art book beautifully conveys. And I'm not, I don't like breaking the spine on my book, so... I apologize for the kind of, you know, the left hand side will be curved, but it is what it is. And as you can see, the colors are reproduced absolutely beautifully. And you can see on the side we have the English, Spanish, and I believe Japanese there. More of his work. If you're not used to his work, I think he calls it fashionable paranoia. Great term, by the way. And you can see more translations down the side. I'm not even going to pretend that I know all of these. The thing that I love about Shintaro Gago, which sets him apart, is his use of colored pencils. I've seen a lot of people that don't like that, but I find it strange that people into manga, anime, can get really particular about what they like, what they don't like. I've seen people complain that Chainsaw Man is too sketchy for them, which, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, look at how beautifully surreal this work is. And with my hand as a comparison, you can see just how beautifully large this book is. Speaking of hands, <laughs> did not plan that. This one I've always really loved. I was just talking about Tonka Toys the other day. I was saying that if we ever had a house with stairs on it, I 
just keep the receipt in here to mark out pages I really like. But as I was saying, I've always said that if we had a house with stairs on it, Sybil would totally buy Tonga trucks to leave on them to screw with me. I love this one where you can see the face within a face. And if you don't follow him on Twitter and Instagram, especially on Twitter, he puts a lot of like animated work. His YouTube channel is also really well done. Just wonderfully disturbing work. Zebra cats, take note. <laughs> And I'll probably mention this in the introduction. Uh, the Flying Lotus album. Oh, I think Warp still has some of the deluxe editions. If not, check Amoeba Records. But well worth the price if you're a fan of either Flying Lotus or Shintaro. I should say that. And... Since it's a shotgun mic, hopefully you're not picking up the sound of my neighbor's table saw going on. <laughs> Cattle decapitation should totally get an album cover from Shitaro. And here we go, these are his uh, DVD covers. And as I said before, his use of colored pencils allows him to achieve tonal effects that you don't see on a lot of other people. And I love these, these little cute ones that he does. Look at this. The great thing about this book is you can just get lost spending long minutes just looking at his stuff because there's so much detail and it's so kaleidoscopic in its range. It's almost like eating German chocolate cake. You can take it in very small doses and be utterly satisfied. Love those. How great is that? And then Charlie Chaplin. As I will probably mention in the introduction, Erotic Grotesque Nonsense, a book I highly recommend. She talks a lot about Chaplin's first visit to Japan and therefore raised into modern entity. A little pin in the pendulum. I love this one. Apes dismantling the obelisk. <laughs>
And I'm hoping you get an idea of just how wonderfully reproduced. I mean, this book is so well made. And the color reproductions. Absolutely fabulous. And I love this one for Strange Music Collection. This is flyers and posters section. You know what? I could see a band like Soylent Green. This would make a great album cover for them or flyers for them. Maybe Big Destroyer. Oh yeah, the uptight. Not gonna like this video, but not my damage. This I guess was from his personal zine, which oh my god. I would love to get copies of that. This is the problem when I fall down a rabbit hole. I tend to grow obsessive. Collection of his book covers. And there you go. And Chroma Books, as I said, will love you forever for the just insane amount of effort that you took in getting this to me. And let's get back. Love y'all. Bye.